Hi guys and welcome to another video. In the minute we're in February and it's freezing. I think we've got the beast from the east on its way uh, so the weatherman's predicting and the pond temperature is it's pretty cold. I certainly wouldn't like to go in there anyway. Um, the fish generally they sort of sat on the bottom they're not enjoying it. They do come out when the sun's up or uh, when you're walking past but as a rule they're not liking this cold temperature so i think for next winter for 2019's winter what i'm going to do is make a frame for the pond and put some polycarbonate sheets over the top of it just to try and keep the wind chill off it uh, i am playing with the idea of actually putting an air source heater on here um, they are quite expensive to buy obviously but if it if it's not overly expensive to run uh, I might just put one on and keep the temperature around about 8 degrees or so for them and then at least the temperature is not, not dropping down too much. Uh, the filter is working absolutely fantastic, obviously very little maintenance with that. Um, Water is crystal clear, parameters are absolutely spot on, very very pleased with it. Just really waiting for spring to kick in which hopefully should be any week now. Hi guys and welcome to my garage. I've uh, recently stripped the garage apart, got rid of all the rubbish inside it and taken it to the tip and I've gone and built myself a large, um, it's about 9 foot long and 8 foot wide and roughly 3 foot deep with the water in, um, quarantine stroke grow on that. Um, I wanted to do the, uh, the, the, the man cave and the, the pond this year but unfortunately I think money's going to be a bit tight again so it might just get pushed back to either the back end of this year certainly the next year when it will get built anyway so for the time being i decided to uh, build myself this this fat um, at the minute it's running off an easy pod um, i do have a nexus 310 coming that somebody's uh, kindly given me and that will go in its place um, everything's all plumbed up and it's working um, i've used flexible pipe because it's just easier sometimes to uh, get around the corners like i say it's only a temporary thing so, but uh, this this is it. At the minute, um, we do actually have some residents. If I just lift up the polycarbonate sheets, you can see some fish there. There's a, it's a big shagoy around, I think, I think she's about 72 cm. Uh, the tan show, um, show her in the middle. Um, she's about 65, 68. Three step to Haku, that's about 45 if I remember rightly. Um, the other Kahaku, uh, I'm not quite sure on the side, but it's not a million miles off the three step. And there's a little shower down there as well. So uh, they're in and here at the minute. They're uh, in quarantine. Um, they'll be in here for at least six weeks until the weather books up. This is actually heated, um, this water. I think we're about nine degrees at the moment, but um, I am going to heat it quite high uh, and uh, treat the fish if you need treating. But they will stay in here for a little while until the uh, I'm happy that they can go in the pond. There's a couple of little nicks on one of them that needs to be sorted. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a guided tour. This one here, this one's going to be called Rose anyway. So, beautiful fish. And um, the Chagoy, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to call that one yet. I think it's female, I've not checked it out. But uh, if anybody has any suggestions for a name, leave it in the comment section. Right, anyway, moving on. So what have we got? We've uh, done it. the bottom drain is uh, a two inch pipe running on the bottom there going into the uh, easy pod, a little two inch slide valve there so I can disconnect it. Um, I don't really trust slide valves so much, I have had them leak so I know there is one actually on the Nexus that comes with it but I decided to put another one on just for uh, safety really. Um, if I open up the uh, thing you can see I've added the uh, filter start in it, kick start the system. Uh, that's that's working perfectly fine. I do need a little bit more water in the uh, in the quarantine, but at the minute I'm I'm quite happy with where it's at. Anyway, we're going to a 15 watt UV uh, Evolution Aqua, and then the pipe comes out and goes out a little hole. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Just down there, and then it comes out around here. You have to excuse the mess. There's stuff everywhere at the minute to a uh, heat pump, a 5.5 kilowatt output heat pump. It uses, from what I can tell, about 2.5 to 280 watts and it's producing 5.5 kilowatts of heat, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Now I've got a little um, wattage meter on the, uh, on the feed to this and it's been going since this morning 
and I mean it was at five degrees the temperature this morning. I've lift this little panel up. I don't know if you can see it. I've set it to 12 degrees, that's on the left, and it's currently at nine. It's cost me 21p so far. Now if I'd have done that on like an electro heater, I dread to think what it would cost to be honest with you, because obviously electric heaters are pretty expensive to run. But I would imagine in this cold weather, it would have probably cost me in the regions of maybe two pounds so far to heat it, whereas that's cost me 21p. I know the initial outlay for these things is quite a lot, but the saving on them is just phenomenal. Like I said, it's all a temporary installation at the minute. So let's just go back into uh, the, uh, the quarantine where it's not so windy and cold. So this is what we've got. This is what we've built. Um, I'll show some uh, uh, little stills in a minute of the uh, of the build. Um, it has changed since those stills were done. I didn't actually have time to take any more photos. Um, basically, what had happened was is the liner that I put in, as the saying is, buy cheap, buy twice, uh, was faulty and it was passing water through. Now I originally thought I had a, a leak on the bottom drain, so I drained off the pond and. Uh, peel back the liner to have a look and then I've got water inside the pond which can only mean it's come through the liner so I had to uh, throw that liner, I got a refund on it and uh, I went out and bought another one, a much better one I didn't really want to spend the money because like I say this is a, a temporary thing but this is like a very very thick um, uh, what's it called now, uh, like a polythene uh, type material um, it's not butyle because butyl would be about three times more expensive than that. But I think that just cost me about £72 from a local koi dealer, so it's not too bad. So, moving on. So when the pond was actually dropped, I decided to bolster the actual pond a bit more, because there had been just an ever so slight little bit of movement um, that I could see in the wood. Now, it was pretty strong to begin with, to be honest with you, but obviously there's a hell of a lot of weight of water inside here. I mean, at the minute, I think I've got about 4,000 litres in, I can't remember exactly. Uh, so there's basically four tonne of water in here, so it's got to be pretty strong. So I, uh, I bolstered the, the base of it, because obviously that's where the weight is. Um, and I also did around the sides as well, uh, I put a lot more timber in. And I've watched it all week, it's not moved a mill, so I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest with you. So, these are the resonance. The, uh, like I said before, they seem to be doing A-OK. -okay. Um, there's a little bit of work to do on one of them. Um, so uh, just keep my eye on it really, but uh, like I said, they come from a very, very cold environment um, and uh, they're just getting used to it. So give them a few days to settle down and then once the uh, temperature's got to about 14 degrees in here, uh, which won't take too long, but I'm only doing 3 degrees a day uh, from here on in, uh, I will then do a little bit of treatment on one of them and uh, just, just monitor them. Um, I'll do some scrapes, make sure there's nothing on them. I have a funny feeling there might be something on them. Um, they're not flashing or anything like that. So, uh, but it's always best to be safe. Um, like I say, this is a quarantine at the end of the day, so they'll be proper quarantined before they go uh, into my pond. So yes, that's that's about it really at the minute. Um, the fish are doing great. So I think they're very hungry though. Looking at them, I don't think they've been fed for a little while. And um, obviously, I won't be feeding them just yet because. Uh, this is a new system and if I start chucking food in I'm going to get ammonia spikes. Um, I have to keep on top of the, uh, the water parameters, uh, watch it very carefully and um, obviously I'll be doing uh, partial water changes prob probably every other day to begin with, um, doing the water tests every day and then we'll just take it from there. But it shouldn't take too long for the system to kick in. Um, I will probably obviously get new pond syndrome with it but uh, Hopefully, if I keep my eye on it and uh, keep doing regular partial water changes, I shouldn't get too many issues. So, there we go. Moving on. Polycarbonate sheets. I decided to get two. I um, had a look at the local Wix store and to be honest with you, they're a fortune in there. Um, to, to cover this was well over £100, so it's just not feasible. Um, so I decided to go on uh, an auction site and uh, have a look on there. Now there's thousands of places that are selling them, so you do have to do a bit of digging. Now I got these. These are, um, I think they measured 8 by, is it 4 or 4.6 or something like that? I can't remember exactly now. I think it was 8 by 4.6. And uh, including PMP, it cost me about £58. So much, much better. It's 10 mil thick stuff, so um, it's the decent stuff. It's not the... Uh, the thin stuff that you can get 
Um, I do need to make a bit of a frame for this yet. Like I say, this has all been a bit of a, in all fairness, a bit of a rush job to get this up because I knew these fish were coming. So um, once the, the weather's bucks up a little bit, I mean, it's an absolutely glorious day outside now, if you look. Um, it's really, really cold. It's probably only, well, it's about two degrees outside at the minute. It's not, it's not warm at all. And the fish aren't really enjoying it out there either. So um, I'm going to see how this heat pump goes on this year, see what it costs me make some uh, notes um, I think the heat pump retails at about £849 to buy um, I could have gone and got a Juratec but they are about three times more expensive and let's face it they've got koi vats on them these days so um, I decided to go for the uh, um, crystal um, brand if you have another look um, crystal enterprise um, they are uh, significantly cheaper uh, if I remember rightly they've got the uh, Toshiba parts in it every single part can be changed warranties two years on them and I've installed them in the past and they're absolutely brilliant so uh, very very simple to install um, all you do is basically take off the nut and inside there there's a little uh, rubber washer take that off put some pressure pipe in put the uh, nut on it put the rubber washer on it put it in hand tight finished that's it that's as complicated as it gets very easily marked you've got uh, output inputs obviously from your pump going in and then return back to the pond a uh, little tip for you here I use uh, a low resin sealant you can see it, it's not actually a very good finish on there to be honest with you but I'm not really that fussed about that at the minute to seal any um, uh, flexible pipes that I use now obviously I don't use silicon I always use marine safe uh, uh, products but I've always found in the past that it's very very hard to get a seal on them first time round. When I originally did my pond um, I had some plastic pipe in there and could I get it to seal? Just no. And by the fifth day, because you have to usually have to wait about 24 hours for these things to cure, I still had leaks and it was driving me bonkers. Um, and a friend of mine showed me a little tip with this. Now I'm going to pass it on to you. What I do is I put a bead of sealant around the actual fitting and a bead on the inside of the pipe as well. Um, I'll get a wire clip as you can see here, in fact this one's a little bit better to see, uh, just here, and I'll slide it all on and I'll tighten the wire clip down just, just so it starts to tighten, but it's not tight, and then you leave it for about half an hour, 45 minutes. Once the time's passed, tighten it up to its max and then walk away and leave it for 24 hours. Never leaks, absolutely perfect, so uh, that might be a little tip for you for any future pipe work that you need to do. So, what are we at at the minute? <sighs> Uh, we're still at nine degrees so it'll take a little while to reach the temperature i want but uh, slow and steady wins the race as they say right guys this is my new electric meter um, i've got it rigged up to the air source heater outside so i can see how much it's actually using energy wise um, great little device i got it off amazon for about 14.99 uh, you can program it in uh, how much you're actually charging per unit for electricity off your energy provider. I'm, uh, I think it's 14p a unit uh, I'm actually set at, so I have set this at 14p. Uh, if I press the cost button a couple of times on it, there we go, 14p. So uh, it's actually used today 60p from about 9ish, half 8, 9 o'clock this morning till I think, what are we now, just 20 to 9 at night. Uh, to heat 4,000 litres of water thereabouts um, from I think it was about 5 or 6 degrees this morning to 12 degrees and uh, it's not actually turned back on yet for the last sort of hour and a bit so it's holding the heat quite well um, the pond is heavily insulated so uh, it does pay to insulate these things so yeah it should be interesting to see how much this actually costs to run over the next few months now I know this week coming we have the uh, the beast from the east arriving so uh, no doubt it'll cost a little bit more to run but uh, it's got to be better than running uh, an electric heater I personally wouldn't recommend using an electric heater unless it's just, just short quick blasts because they are just too expensive if the bank can uh, allow it or the missus um, I would definitely go out and buy an air source heater I think they're absolutely fantastic very very simple to install anybody could do it you don't need any plumbing skills or anything like that um, as long as you can cover your pond over so the heat's not just escaping um, brilliant absolutely fantastic so uh, there we go so guys that's about it for this video i will be doing a follow-up video in the not too distant future with the running cost of the air source heater 
Um, it will be quite interesting to see what it actually does um, cost to run. I'm hoping it's probably going to cost me something in the region of about five, maybe six pound a week to run. And let's face it, you can only get a couple of pints of lager for that, so it's not exactly going to be breaking the bank. So uh, I'm going to turn the light off for these guys now and uh, check up on them in the morning. And then the next couple of days, a little bit of treatment on one of them, and then uh, we'll take it from there. But hopefully spring won't be too far away now, and we'll be able to put them in the actual main pond. Take care, see you later, bye.